my Lent with the sisters. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get frank about it. Hey Carmelos, I invite you now just to take a moment to maybe leave a comment down below about your relationship and different uh, moments that you've had during your life in uh, visiting with or knowing or getting to be a around different religious, whether they've been men or women. Maybe we can get a good conversation going about how uh, the church has benefited from those that are living the religious way of life through consecration. Thanks again. So during my Thursday videos, I want to make a um, generalized theme for this uh, Lenten season. That's going to be my different uh, lens throughout my time in the church because I was baptized as a baby. But as I've said in previous videos, I came to the church in college. That's when I received confirmation and first communion. So today I want to talk a little bit about not only my first Lent as a, as a student in Carmel, as a pre-novice, but also it being spent with the wonderful Carmelite sisters of the aged and infirmed. A wonderful wonderful group of women that have just given me so much during my life as a Carmelite and uh, I wanted to make sort of this little video as a as a, a thank you to them. Uh, we have a wonderful little sort of organic tradition that started up within our province because the Carmelite sisters really began with um, sister, uh, Mother Angeline um, leaving her previous group of uh, nuns and coming and wanting to live uh, under the Carmelite rule. We were connected with each other, uh, us being the province of course and etc. And uh, from that, the relationship, the Carmelite sisters, the agent firm, sprout up. And as their name implies, they are Carmelite sisters that take care of the uh, sick and the elderly. They run nursing homes and things like this. So this organic tradition is this, that our pre-novices will go up there. Pre-novices are those uh, that are just newly sort of attached to the order, discerning a deeper vocation, uh, discerning their deeper vocational call and et cetera, under the guidance and support of us friars. So the tradition is this. I keep beating around the bush, sorry about that. So the tradition is this, that our brothers will go up there and serve all the Masses of Holy Week for the sisters because they go to a Catholic school and uh, obviously they don't have classes during Holy Week, so it's a great opportunity for them to get out and uh, visit our sisters, and it's just a wonderful opportunity for the sisters to get to know our newer guys coming in and our newer guys getting to know our wonderful sisters that have uh, done so much to help us uh, brothers and friars throughout the years. So here I am. And you have to remember, I wasn't raised Catholic, so, you know, I, when I was in the seminary for a diocese, I met one or two sisters, you know, but this is my first real group of sisters that I've gotten to, to hang with and really get to know. So, like, I was, you know, I, I to say I was nervous was an understatement. And, um, our... Uh, sort of provincial at the time was overseeing many of the masses that year so I really got to know him particularly well. I won't mention his name because I know he's kind of a private guy. And that year, this is up in Germantown, New York, um, I give the name out because they have a beautiful museum for Mother Angeline, uh, who is a venerable, who's declared a venerable under Pope Benedict XVI. And and uh, so if you're ever in the area, please, I recommend that you go up and visit. But uh, it's just a, a huge amount of land, open green spaces, which I always thrive well in. And I remember meeting Mother Mark, and this was like the first time I really got to meet, you know, a, a mother in any sort of... of uh, closeness of proximity for lack of a better word and she was so kind she was so tender the sisters were wonderful but challenging they offered great uh, snippets on their own understanding about Carmelites because for the first couple of months of being in the formation process I heard from a multitude of different brothers and etc and this is the first time that I'm getting hearing sort of you know a, a female take on Teresa of Avila, Therese of Sue, John of the Cross, Peter Thomas, you know Blessed Lawrence of the Resurrection and etc and so many things happened during that day. I, that One of the events that happened that weekend, I was, uh, Bald Eagle flew right over my head. And when I mean right over my head, I mean he was like maybe a foot from my head. So that was a little uncomfortable. And that was uh, Easter morning. So go figure there, eh? But um, the sisters during that time really impressed upon me the need to make sure as I journey deeper into Carmel that I'm always listening to the totality of the Carmelite family. You know, not just my brothers, not just the guys that have been ordained a priest, but also the sisters who offered me such great insights. And remember, one of the reasons I became a Carmelite was because of Teresa, uh, because of Teresa of Avila. So lear I learned so many different insights and perspectives that I would never have had unless I would have listened to the sisters. 
And they also taught me so much about needing to listen to all sort of late Carmelites and et cetera. So, I mean, there wasn't no like mystical experiences that happened. There was no great sort of like aha moment, et cetera, but it was just a holy week of such joy. It was a wonderful experience to be with the sisters. Um, the feedback that we got is that they were, they were so honored and wonderful to have us. You know, I just really sensed during that time the joy of the Holy Spirit that was really sort of a foundational brick to my own vocational, my own vocational discernment in the land of Carmel. And to this day, um, I always try to keep a good contact and good relationships with the sisters. Um, sometimes they know a lot more what's going on than us priests and brothers do. But one of the things that, um, I'm able to do now as a priest as I go to their local nursing home in the Bronx and I'm able to offer mass for them twice a week along with the residents of the facility. And uh, it's one of the, the great honors that I have as a Carmelite brother and as a Carmelite priest is to aid and journey with this beautiful vocation with our beloved sisters who have just done so much to enrich the life of the church and to suddenly stand shoulder to shoulder with a group of women that I just see as true prophetic souls within the church stepping up and taking care of of the poor and the dif disenfranchised, you know, the, the elderly. Um, I'm just utterly amazed. And if you're a, uh, a woman out there discerning a vocational call, I really recommend that you look into the Carmelite Sisters of the Aged and Infirmed. Um, I'll put a link down to their vocational stuff down in the in my uh, message section about this video. Uh, they're a wonderful group. I can't speak highly enough to you. And if you're out there discerning a vocation to the religious life, please send me a message. Uh, leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll send you a little something and maybe we can get a good conversation going. Uh, Carmel is not an easy place, but a vocation is not necessarily supposed to be an easy thing because we're all asked to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow Jesus. And growing in union with Christ through love as St. John LaCrosse teaches us means there are a lot of little deaths that we need to do to our own ego. And I really learned that lesson because of the joy that my sisters imparted to me during my Lent, Lenten journey of Holy Week there with the sisters in Germantown. So thank you all for being with me today. I hope you found this video edifying, and I highly recommend you look up these wonderful group of women in the church. I can't speak highly enough for them. Uh, uh, any sisters that's watching this, I'm sorry if I'm making you blush. That is not my intention. So as you journey through these later times in Lent, know that I'm with you, know that I'm praying for you, and may God continue to bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey Carmelos, if you liked today's video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me. And also give the video a like. It allows others to find me. And also, I ask you to leave a comment down below. Let me know what your experience has been like, good or bad, um, with other religious in the church. Whether they be nuns, sisters, hermits, consecrated virgins, friars, etc. Maybe we can get a good conversation going about the religious life in the church. Thanks again. God bless. Thank you.